Welcome to this lecture about the so-called geometric mean. The geometric mean is commonly used when we work with percentages or growth rates. Suppose we have invested 1000 euros in a stock that changes over 3 years. In the first year the stock grows by 10% which means that our 1000 euros have increased to 1100 euros. In the second year, the stock declines by 20%, which means that we lose 220 euros and end that year with 880 euros. And for the last year, the stock grows by 10%, which means that we earn 88 euros and end with 968 euros. Over the three years, the stock has declined by 32 euros. Let's say that we'd like to calculate the average growth rate per year. What multiplication factor should we use to get a geometric sequence that starts with 1000 and ends with 968? We'll first calculate the arithmetic mean of the multiplication factors to see why this method is not appropriate. An increase of 10% means that we multiply 1000 by a multiplication factor of 1.1 to get 1100. A decrease of 20% means that we multiply 1100 by 0 0.8. And finally, we multiply 880 by 1.1. The arithmetic mean of these multiplication factors is 1. A multiplication factor of 1 would correspond to an average or an arithmetic mean of 0% change per year, which cannot be correct since we know that the stock has been reduced by 32 euros over the three years. This example shows that the arithmetic mean is not appropriate for these kinds of data, because we will end up with a strange result. For this type of data, one uses the so-called geometric mean instead, which is defined as the n root of the product of n positive numbers, or as the product raised to the power 1 over n. This is the product notation, which means that we should calculate the product of our numbers. In our example, we have three numbers, which means that n is equal to 3. If we begin our multiplication factors and do the math, we see that the stock on average, is reduced by a multiplication factor of approximately 0 0.989 per year or that we lose about 1.1% each year. If we multiply by a factor of about 0 0.989 every year, which corresponds to 1.1% decline each year, we see that the 1000 euros have been reduced to 968 of the three years. Note that I have used a more exact value for the multiplication factor in my calculations. Taken together, this simple example shows that we should use the geometric mean and not the arithmetic mean when we like to calculate the average percentage change over the years. Note that the product of the multiplication factors corresponds to a multiplication factor that can take us from the initial value to the final value of the three years since 1000 times 0 0.968 is 968. The stock has therefore declined by 3.2% over the three years. However, let's say that we this time do not know how much the stock has changed per year. The only thing that we know is how much we started with and how much we ended with after the three years. If we divide how much we ended with by how much we started with, we see that the stock has declined with a factor of 0 0.968 or 3.2% over the three years. The difference from our previous calculations is that we do not know how much the stock has changed per year. However, what we do know is that the product of the three multiplication factors should be 0 0.968. 0 0.968 to the power 1 over 3 is approximately equal to 0 0.989. We therefore know 
that the stock on average declines by approximately 1.1% per year. Since we now know that the stock declines by approximately 1.1% per year, we can fill in the values in the middle to complete the geometric sequence. We can do this calculation in just a single step, by putting the ratio inside these brackets. We can thereby define the general formula like this, where we divide what we ended with by what we started with, and then take this ratio raised to the power of 1 over n, where n is the number of steps we take. We started with 1000, and ended with 968, over 3 years. If we do the math, we see that the stock declines on average by a multiplication factor of about 0.989, or 1.1% per year. Finally, we will have a look at the geometric example, which explains what is called a geometric mean. Let's consider this rectangle with sides of length 3 and 12. We see that the area of this rectangle is 36. What is the length of one side of a square with the same area as our rectangle? That is actually the geometric mean of the lengths of the two sides of the rectangle. We plug in 3 and 12 in the equation. Since we have only two numbers, n is equal to 2. The product raised to the power of 1 half is equivalent to the square root of the product. The geometric mean of 3 and 12 is therefore 6. The sides of the square is therefore equal to 6. This was the end of this lecture about the geometric mean. Thanks for watching.